I'm going to talk about this. <laughs> What's up, SBSers? We are back with another SBS Virtual Audio File Happy Hour Colossal Product Launch Edition for the second month in a row. I'm, I'm just Yay. super excited. Very, very excited for this evening. Um, so before we talk about the format a little bit, Gary, I know you always like to welcome everyone and, and say a few words. So with that being said, why don't you uh, share some knowledge with the rest of the uh, community here? Well, I don't know about share some knowledge. Now you're really building me up here, but I, I am really, I mean, we all say this every time. This, uh, uh, our virtual audio file happy hours are the highlight of our week whenever we do it. We're so excited to, again, be with the SVS community. But that being said, we know some folks are suffering. It's, it, some folks are uh, 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 not working. Others have lost family members or maybe are ill. And we, we uh, uh, are in no way minimizing any of that. We're thinking about all of you. We love all of you, but we just wanted to be with you. And that's what this uh, happy hour is all about. So great to finally be back with everyone again. And we have a really interesting announcement tonight, right? Nick? Very, very fun. Very interesting. Uh, you know, there's going to be, be no more spoilers that you can give after this one for a little while. So uh, we're going to. Oh, we're yes, gonna I this. can. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> I guess you could at any <laughs> there's point. There's plenty yeah. of stuff I, I can spoil. <laughs> yeah. Fair point. Fair point. All right. Forget I said that. But uh, as always, uh, we have the Larry, our uh, national trading manager, Larry. Welcome to uh, tonight's broadcast. Always good to see you. Uh, good evening, and, everyone uh, out there. Because we are doing a uh, special product launch edition, we have two of our VIPs uh, from engineering and design, Smith Freeman, our chief designer. Smith, how the heck are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Nick. And of course, as I call him, the legendary Ed Mullen, our director of technology and customer service, who is a wealth of knowledge and will be sharing some insights tonight. Uh, so for anyone who may be joining us for the very first time, uh, the way we do things here is, uh, well, we're all going to talk about what we've been listening to before we get to the big announcement. But to be eligible for the giveaways, all you need to do is leave a comment. My man Vince is working behind the scenes. He will pick names. I will announce them live on air. So if you leave a comment, you are eligible to win something. And, uh, and you only just, need one comment. One right. comment will do it. And if you're struggling to think of a comment, maybe when this product is revealed, think of a clever one line that, uh, or, or fun one line that uh, that might help define it. But we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. I don't want to jump I just saw one me. line that might define it. It says, uh, one comment was, is Gary best or worst president? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer, answer to that, that there is an answer. The answer to that is yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> well, as, I want to do, I do want to mention the giveaways again, because uh, it is tradition here for Larry to list them off. And a couple of them will be secret. But uh, Larry, why don't you tell the good people what is up for giveaways tonight? See, you put me on spot. Normally you have me do it on our teasers, but see, I have mm. it right here. So we are going to be giving away to start off the evening a pair of prime wireless speakers. Then after that, we have a special giveaway that may be tied to the product announcement we're doing this evening. A new product. Uh, so, yeah, so we've got that. Then we also have a uh, an SB or PB1000 Pro of your choice. You get to choose Announced on the previous audio file happy hour I might mention two weeks ago. Yes. So another exciting product we could get there. A pair of Prime Bookshelf speakers. And then to finish off the night, we have a really killer 2.1 no. system. Which is, yeah, be uh, careful. Yeah, don't give too much about this. We'll yes. just leave it there. So just a really cool setup that's got some cool items inside. Let's just go there. How's that? That that works for me. Um, yeah. And we are going to drag this out a little bit. We're going to stick to our normal format and talk about what we've been uh, tuning into. But we have some are more we gonna fun. Are going to talk about what we're drinking? For once, I can uh, answer something interesting. <laughs> that's right. Tonight's a, a special night for that, too, which we can, uh, we can talk about that a little bit later. But uh, let's go around and... Uh, We'll go right in order and say, uh, Smith, what are you drinking and what have you been tuning into recently? Um, I'm drinking this lovely Port Asked eight year single malt scotch. It's delicious. Um, and I have been not really listening or watching anything new because I've just been so freaking busy with what we've been working <laughs> on and everything else coming down the pipe. So I've just been in front of the glowing boxes all day long. Well, that's what we like to hear. Well, Larry, well, uh, maybe, well, maybe you have something more exciting that you've been tuning into, although I can't think I of anything more exciting. Well, I mean, I, products and development. I mean Smith, Smith kind of downplayed, but Smith is really a horrible influence on all of us. Smith had this <laughs> idea that it would be fun for the entire uh, SBS gang to have a virtual whiskey tasting. So we have five bottles this big. This is, I said, send a shot around of each one. He, I, this looks like about four shots. 
we have five like this of all different brands, uh, types of whiskey that Smith picked out with Ed. And we all have, uh, and he, he went to a lot of trouble, actually, bought the bottles, divided it all up, put them in, in uh, I guess they're called drams, these little mm -hmm. bottles. Um, and after, we're going to celebrate the launch of this exciting new product that you don't get to know about yet uh, <laughs> for, for 10 more minutes. Um, uh, we're going to celebrate right after this show, our, our team with this uh, whiskey tasting and, and Smith is going to be our virtual tour guide. So it's we're going so easy on It's surprising to me that Smith is already drinking. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, gonna be, yeah, yeah. it's like a race. We're going to have to pace ourselves a little bit here, but that's okay. So. We're going to have fun either way. Um, so just to get us back on track, Larry, what have you been, uh, what do you got there? What are you drinking? What have you been tuning into? Uh, I'm drinking an unsweet tea. So no cherry Coke this week. Um, then I have uh, been watching a lot of Mavericks ball, seeing KP and Luca come together and it's looking pretty sweet now. Uh, got into HBO Max and watched the book of Eli. I had not watched that in years and forgot how actually really awesome that movie was. Uh, but really, I've just been, as, as Smith said, just stupid busy with the uh, the new product launches that we've been having and working with retailers and doing uh, about 20 hours of Zoom meetings a week, uh, educating them on stuff. So that's what we've been doing. And it's been a, a ton of fun and having everybody get excited around this and uh, can't wait. So fun oh, time. We do have a new movie coming out too, right? So there's. Uh, oh, some yeah. I wanted action. you to mention there was a, yeah. a conflict. Um, Obviously, it's not as big a story as what we're doing here, but there's a, a big launch tonight in the world of cinema. What's What's going on with that? Yeah. So uh, I think you all might be aware of this little movie. It's the uh, the Justice League. And we are finally, after I don't know how many years, finally getting the director's intended cut from uh, Mr. Snyder himself. So I will be hitting that up uh, later tonight or tomorrow. Probably not tonight. I may not be feeling so hot later tonight. <laughs> Four hours. Definitely that's, that's a long yeah. whiskey you know, how, Larry, how long, how long have we been working together? Uh, five years. Five years. How many times have we gone out to dinner or drinks after an, a consumer event? Uh, quite a few, but I, I normally uh, immune myself in just a beer. Maybe I have never seen. I've. I don't think you even drink a beer. This is Larry's revisionist history. I've never seen Larry drink anything other than tea. Yeah. No, Nick. Nick's seen me drink beer and Smith too. Times. But I'm always yeah. driving you guys, so one of us no, has true. to be responsible. Yeah. So you're right about that. I take care of you guys. There you go. I hear Gary, my wife you... laughing in the other room right now. She is across <laughs> the hall between two closed doors, and I can hear her laughing right now. <laughs> well, thank you. I for am you. Yeah. Uh, Gary, what about you? What uh, anything special in your glass tonight? Well, and well, I think we already talked about the. Uh, I mean, I have my crystal light for the show because unlike Smith, I, I I try to pace myself a little bit, but uh, um, but I think as far as content, what I'm what I've been experiencing, I uh, watched uh, that new Coming to America. It's mm -hmm. pretty funny, maybe mm -hmm. not as funny as the old one, but it's pretty good. It was fun to watch, and then I stumbled over this. Um, movie that i didn't know about that i thought was was cool called american ultra i don't know you guys ever heard oh, of this love it the, yeah. that was really good and really good demo I, I enjoyed the heck out of it um and i'm continuing my vinyl renaissance just going down the rabbit hole of really uh cool uh, uh jazz from the 60s and 70s and some classic rock so um doing a lot of two channel got some I had an excuse to bring some reference speakers from other brands in for uh, other pr other projects. Smith's laughing because we kind of picked them out together. <laughs> and so I'm trying uh, really high-end speakers with this, and it's fun. Very cool. And, and Ed, uh, just so all those commenters, Ed is not falling asleep. It's a combination of the lighting, the camera <laughs> angle, and a couple of other things. So please, if you think he's sleeping, he's not. He's always on point. But uh, Ed that's wants his Ed. privacy. Yeah. So he might, he would do this from the dark if he could. Well, then he's reading all the comments, and so we all look like we're looking down because we're reading all your comments as the thousands right. of them are coming through, too. My camera is mounted up here, so it's like and my eyes are down, looking down at my screen, so it looks like I'm falling asleep, but I'm really not. I'm totally switched on. And you got a big uh, jar of caffeine there, right? No. What are you drinking? Yeah. Uh, this this is a shout-out to uh, Rob McNabb, a true Scotsman. This is Belveni, 12-year Single malt, single barrel, first fill. So it's a it's a very special scotch. It's one of the ones we're going to be tasting later, and I figured I'd try a little bit during the uh, during the broadcast. And what you've been listening to? Anything fun? Any recommendations? 
We uh, binged uh, Pacific Rim The Black, which is the animated series for Pacific mm -hmm. Rim. I thought that was pretty good, pretty well done. Uh, anybody else watch it? I see Larry nodding his head. I, I know of it, but I have not gotten into it yet. But I do love the first Pacific Rim because uh, yeah. I enjoy everything from Guillermo. Yeah, it's one of my guilty pleasures, the first Pacific Rim. So it was, it was pretty cool. Very cool. Well, I am enjoying a local uh, Massachusetts uh, bourbon, Bully Boy, in preparation for uh, our tasting tonight. I'm going easy. I watered it down. Don't worry, guys. And uh, also, I've been uh, listening to a lot of Nate Dog. I don't know why. I just felt like listening to a lot of Nate Dog <laughs> while I was cleaning the house this past weekend. Well, I did watch uh, U.S. versus Billy Holiday. Uh, I truly enjoyed it. You know, it's not big action flick, but I found it to be uh, very watchable, very enjoyable learning about her. I always loved her music. And Six Underground, I think uh, Larry was commenting. He thought it could have been a lot better. It totally kept my attention. And, and that's really oh, all I look for now fun, in those yeah. kind of movies. So I, uh, I enjoyed that thoroughly. Um, so there you go. I, I think... Uh, you know, we did a good quick round table there. And before we get to the big reveal, we uh, we owe the good people a giveaway. And for our first prize of the evening, we are going to be giving away an SVS Prime Wireless Speaker System, as Larry said. Excuse me. And the winner for that tonight is going to be a man with an amazing name, Nick Tucker. Nick Tucker, congratulations. You <laughs> have up, yourself man. a Prime Wireless Speaker System. Vince will reach out to you, get your info. We'll ship that out here within the next day or two. So, uh Gary, I think I'm just going to cede the floor to you here, and I, and I know you like to, to make some uh, some drama here. So uh, with that being said, uh, it's all yours. Let's uh, let's give the folks what they want to hear. Thanks, Nick. I'm, you know, I'm watching the comments. I'm not even seeing any guesses this time. And then when we announced 1000 Pro, which thanks to you guys, our SVS community, that was the greatest launch in our company's history. We've never had that level of energy around any product launch ever. Um, you know, it was just really... I guess remarkable would be what I would say. It was so much fun um, watching emails pour into me, asking questions and, and phone calls to Ed's team. And then, and then the next day, Larry, all of Larry's contacts all in retail storefronts all over the country. And then uh, Thomas, who uh, you guys haven't met, who uh, is our senior director of uh, international sales and business development. He is in, um, Dusseldorf, Germany, and he's getting like mega outreach, um, even though it's middle of the night in places like that. So it's just really fun watching, you know, our global SVS community get excited about stuff like this. Now it's interesting. Is this launch as exciting as the last one? And, and I, I'm waiting to see what people think. Um, for me, it's incredibly exciting because it takes us into a new in my opinion, a completely new realm. Um, I guess uh, what I mean by that, well, the first thing I want to say is how uh, how we view product launches at SBS. I think it's really important. We don't just bring something to market. We don't, we're not a latest and greatest kind of company. We really don't want to bring something to market to to our community. If it doesn't make a completely different statement than anything we've ever done or anything, hopefully anything anyone else has ever done. And I really feel like this um, announcement fills that bill. Um, now, the way I frame it up, and you'll, you'll see it's going to go live on our site in two minutes. The way I frame it up is uh, over the time that I've been at SVS, which is almost 10 years now, um, I always got asked two questions over and over again. The first question was, when are you guys going to make a massive, you know, uh, mega driver size subwoofer? Um, and there were reasons why we didn't do it, which you guys may remember when we launched 16 Ultra, we explained why it was more difficult than it seems. Why wouldn't you just make a giant driver subwoofer and put it out there? It's going to move a lot of air. It's going to be loud. The, the reason was that we don't want to just uh, create a tractor pull kind of a product. We want to create a subwoofer that creates deep bass, plays it with the volume level that, that the user wants, but especially we want it to be convincing and uh, be a part of a total immersive experience. And, and 16 Ultra really was that, but it took time. Now, the second question that I get asked, and maybe I get asked this question even more often, especially within the audio world, is, you guys ready? <laughs> when is SVS 
going to bring to us a micro subwoofer. And I am proud to announce that a there's a confluence, a whole bunch of different things that came together to create what we're announcing tonight, the SVS 3000 micro subwoofer. This product is the first micro subwoofer. I don't know if you can tell. It looks like it's broken, but no, that's just an exploded view. Do we have a picture of it? Like, like yeah, Larry, get the one in someone's finishes. living room. The two finishes. <laughs> um, there she is. My bad. The three th there it is. That is a 10-inch black gloss or white piano gloss cabinet. It's tiny with dual active eight inch opposing drivers, active, no passive radiators. And we'll explain why that's not such a great thing. This is the first micro subwoofer that's worthy. I mean, I would say it's the first micro subwoofer that's even legitimately a subwoofer with deep subterranean bass as loud as the user wants. It's definitely the first micro subwoofer, micro subwoofer worthy of the name. SVS. So we are going to have some fun uh, just showing the real size of this thing here in a couple minutes. But um, Gary, do we want to get into the challenges of designing a micro subwoofer a little bit before we actually get into the sort of the deep dive technology story a little bit later on? Totally. Let's do that. I mean, there were so many things that why this wasn't possible. But, you know, I'd like to frame it up. And Smith and I, Smith and I have you know, uh, lots of history. We won't go into the personal history, but no, I'm kidding. But um, <laughs> we, Smith and I spend a lot of time together trying to get things going. Uh, not, and it, I've gone through Smith withdrawal because I haven't seen him in more than a year because of COVID. Um, but uh, there's one night um, about eight years ago where we we because we really wanted to do this, where we gathered into a room with, and Smith's assignment was to buy every micro subwoofer. It wasn't eight years ago. It was more like four or five years ago, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, buy every micro subwoofer on the market, all the best ones, no matter how expensive, doesn't matter. And let's put them all in a room and let's really listen to them. And we did. We spent probably six hours evaluating every aspect of performance of 10 different micro subwoofers. And we were walking out to kind of debrief after that and, and talk, talk it through. And I said to Smith, how did you enjoy your tour of the Museum of Mediocre Subwoofers? It was just <laughs> so deflating. There was nothing, there was no deep bass. It, they didn't play loud. They were, there was like this sort of one note bass experience. And it was just something like, you know what? I'm not bringing something like this to the market. We need to create a real subwoofer experience. How are we gonna do that? Smith, can you talk about what led to uh, the possibilities that we that culminated in 3000 micro yeah i mean the the biggest probably one of the biggest jumping off points for this product was when we developed the amplifier in the 3000 series so getting getting that amplifier uh and all the horsepower and all of the efficiency that comes out of the 800 d2 into into that package that was really kind of like a like a starting point um but then even beyond that, then it was, it wasn't enough. So you had an amplifier that was capable right. of a, a digital amplifier, but with a uh, massive output because of right. MOSFET analog output and right. 800 watts continuous power, more than 2,500 watts of peak power. So you had a platform that was amazing, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. But then, you know, that was just a, that was just kind of just one part of it. And so the whole thing has to be an ecosystem, just like any, any product is, an, is a marriage of all the parts together. And um, in the case of the 3000 micro, you know, the amplifier delivered all the, the wattage and power we would want, but we needed a driver or drivers in this system that could actually use and, and handle all of that power, every, every bit of the wattage, every bit of the current. Um, so that- so that the amplifier thing, was only part of it. Yeah, the amplifier was- You, you did a lot of work on the driver so you could deliver right. on the potential that you finally had with the amplifier, right? Totally. Yeah, and so in this, in the particular case of the three thousand micro, the this re really required a totally ground up, fresh approach to a driver. And you know, we we use an eight inch driver in the Ultra Tower, and, and and that's a great driver for that system. But this really required a totally different animal. And so, ground up motor, basket, surround cone, every every part, every material that we chose, it was explicitly for this system, so that we could really 
utilize every bit of the power from the 3000 series amplifier in this in this new system. And we are going to dive into that technology, but Ed, I thought this would be a good point for you to maybe, maybe you talk. should give one away first, Nick. Uh, are we ready for that? I was going to have Ed. I, okay, I mean, don't let me rush you, but I, I feel like that's okay. there's a lot of, I just want, there's I mean, a lot of I salivating think... going on on this. On, on the, I'm watching the comments and there's, there's well, you touched of... on the, the issues that a lot of micro subwoofers that have come before have, have had. And, and so before we start having some fun, Ed, you know, you've heard more subwoofers than probably anyone that I know, or I know for a fact, um, like what are just some of those common issues that had to be overcome in designing a, uh, a micro subwoofer that is actually a true subwoofer? Well, most of the other micro subwoofers, really all of them on the market, uh, use use passive radiators, and it's it, what is a call, passive radiator, Ed? Well, we call them drone cones. It's it's basically a a <laughs> woofer without a motor. It's no voice call, no motor. It's a driver it's, that's not hooked up. Right, and and uh, it only operates over a very narrow bandwidth, and they tend to have uh, sort of a one note, uh, a boomy quality to them. And we and really slow, want right? to. I mean, they always have to react like an instant later to what the driver was doing, so they kind of muddy things up. Right, and and also there's there's some force uh, uh, asymmetry there. They tend to be uh, very vibration prone. They some of them actually can walk across the floor. Uh, we we noticed that when we were demoing uh, the other uh, models. So we really wanted to look the at other brands, not our, not other SVS models. The other brands, of course. There's yeah. a fame, there's a brand that I'm not going to name that's known for micro subwoofers, and and uh, but within the industry, they were always known that they would march across the room. Yeah. Um, which which we didn't want. So in, instead of sort of reinventing the wheel on that, we wanted a completely fresh approach, and we're looking at two active woofers and their. Uh, force opposed and electrically uh, in parallel. And and Smith can talk about the benefits. Of yeah, we're, we will get into the, those uh, things. And, and I think the uh, we're gonna dive into the technology. Don't worry about that. The uh, the thing I would also say is that I think just, you know, performance wise distortion, you know, with the passive radiators, like you get sort of a boomy one note sound. It's just, a, it's not a great subwoofer experience. And so we really wanted to do something that was completely above and beyond what any real super compact subwoofer has been able to achieve. Um, so and I can, think I say experience, can I say experientially what, I'm, what I've, I've had prototypes uh, and now the current, the actual uh, um, production in my office for more than six months and living with this. And it is just such a freaking magic trick. I just, it's so amazing. Um, it goes super deep. It's incredibly accurate. It plays so loud that, um, it's hard to imagine that if you want it to, obviously you don't have to make it play loud, but I tend to do that. Um, the whole house can hear it, even though it's in a 10 inch cabinet. And um, because it's dual active opposing eight inch drivers, they cancel each other out. So in terms of what you hear, I, I, and Smith and Ed, you confirm or deny this, I hear zero cabinet resonance. So it's, 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 one of the most pristine subwoofer experiences I've ever had ever at any price or any size. And then the other thing is it's completely and totally inert to the point that I have to play content where I know there's bass that would not be reproduced by the ultra bookshelves I'm using it with uh, to make sure it's on because I can't tell by, by touching the cabinet, it literally doesn't vibrate at all. It's yeah, really you could, remarkable. You could balance a nickel on the uh, on the cabinet and it wouldn't that's fall right. over when it's running. Oh, why didn't you tell me that earlier, Ed? I would have set that up now. But that's actually a great segue <laughs> before we get You're into asking, the uh, Lots of folks are asking the price. It is seven ninety nine ninety nine US I, in the hand uh, the ten coats of hand applied piano black lacquer or ten coats of hand applied piano uh, white. Uh, I guess it's not. Is it piano white? Yeah, piano gloss white. white. You got it. Piano yeah. white lacquer. Uh, seven ninety nine ninety nine with that beautiful gloss finish. So it is a micro subwoofer. So obviously size plays a big part of it. So I'm going to step away here for a second, and we're going to show you some common household objects. And for this, I've actually brought my uh, 16 year old son Eli in to help with this to show just 
roughly what the size is compared to some uh, some household objects. So we're going to go full. And Eli, Eli, did you pass your driver's test or not? We, we need to know. Uh, so, there's, there, there's some, uh, some I didn't take it. I didn't take it. Source subject. Yeah, you didn't, didn't take it. I didn't so. fail okay. or I didn't pass. Yeah, it wasn't a fail. All right. So uh, <laughs> to kick things off, let's go full screen. All right. So we can see it up here. Uh, Eli, why don't you go get some of our uh, common household objects? So the first thing we're going to show off here, let's see. You want a subwoofer for the punchy, punchy, right? Common. You want a yeah. punchy subwoofer. So here you go with a uh, boxing glove next to the uh, 3000 micro. You can see for comparison's sake what uh, how that measures up there. Eli wants to box me for bringing up his driver's <laughs> test. I apologize, Eli. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of right. fitting that, that, that was the first though. object. Uh, so. I'm not sure why you chose this, just because everyone knows roughly how big a banana is. And I feel like that's a common size comparison. So there you go. There's hey, a, a hey, Nick, maybe turn it, turn it just a little bit so everybody can see the, the side where the driver is. Yeah, that's, yeah, that yeah, that way. There, you, there go. you go. And now put that banana right up there. There you there go. There you go. There, right. There's your banana next to three thousand micro. Uh, all right, I think enough of the banana here. So uh, next, we're gonna <laughs> you want you want slam. A subwoofer's got to have slam. So for that, we have a Norwegian hammer. This is not a full size hammer, but it is a Norwegian goat hammer. And uh, next to uh, the three thousand micro, which really does deliver serious slam as and far as a micro subwoofer goes. You can see uh, how that stacks up there. You can see that uh, Nick made a trip to the flea market here, before. I, I think before every physicality, world. incredibly important. This one's for the ladies. This is uh, Bruce Springsteen's Born in America, just like SVS. So uh, there you can see next to it. An Smaller album than a vinyl album. How, how it uh, shapes up there. Uh, we also have some smaller objects here, uh, a pair, and anyone who knows what these are was born in my generation, a pair of micro machines, micro machines. We have the Lamborghini because this thing is speedy as all get up. And then we have a monster truck because of course it can deliver those sort of crushing <laughs> base scenes as well. Oh, so geez. there you go next to some micro machines. <laughs> and our last, oh no, we got Thanks two more things. We have, uh. A Lego minifig, and this is a uh, pig costume minifig. I'm not sure why that one was chosen, but uh, props to you like for that. So there you go, Lego minifig next to it. And our final uh, Ohio native here, a signed picture of Drew Carey from The Price is Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ohio. And I'm that sure that it's smaller than Drew Carey, even after his, <laughs> his diet. Hey, um, Eli, can you, can you pick it up and just kind of hold it in front of you yeah, and, sure. and show the different sides? My head hasn't had a haircut. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you go. So and and, and you can see so the two. Uh, the that's how the dual opposing drivers look. Oh, there's the white one for you guys. So you can see that the amp plate kind of wraps around too. It's a really cool design that our team. Well, Smith had to with. redesign how the amp is configured in order to fit it into a 10 inch cabinet. So that's actually an interesting point, Larry. Well, I hope you all found that riveting. We'll go back to our uh, <laughs> bigger screen here. Uh, wait, not that one. There we I go. That's the first time we've really been cheesy on our broadcast. So uh, that, that was kind of fun. I don't know if I agree with that. But, uh, you know, hopefully we told a nice story about what the uh, 3000 micro is capable of. Now we should give one away, shouldn't we? I so, think so I think we should totally. So the winner, uh, and you can choose the piano white gloss or the piano black gloss, your choice. Uh, but the winner of a 3000 micro subwoofer is Jason Cross. Jason Cross, congratulations. You are the first ever first winner of the 3000 Micro Subway. For you, it will be one of the first people in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Playing with this. Someone's thing. asking how much it weighs. Um, uh, oh, I think uh, somebody looked it up for us, uh, 22 and a half pounds. But uh, it, when you pick it up, it, it is not light. It is extremely heavily braced cabinet. It is inert. I mean, this is a re this is not um, a subwoofer light, L-I-T-E. This is a, the real deal. Good, very good point. Um, so as we get into the tech discussion, Larry, maybe let's show that exploded view again, and then we can uh, walk through some of the uh, the details of, of what exactly is inside of this uh, magical SVS 3000 micro subwoofer. Um, and so for that, I think we wanted to uh, give a quick recap on the uh, the amplifier technology. And, and I'm going to open this one up. Uh, Gary, who do you want to talk about the amp? Was this uh, you want to start off there and get us get us rolling or? Uh... I mean, sure. I, uh, I the the it's the thing i think the main point about the amplifier is finally we had an amplifier that had um the the efficiency both in terms of of uh, power usage but also heat you, you you have to remember that uh amplifiers generate heat and inside a a, a very tiny 10 inch subwoofer cabinet the um if you don't engineer it correctly the heat would be uh unacceptable and obviously we want to make sure the product is safe and never breaks um 
how do you generate the amount of current you need to create a true subwoofer experience in a small cabinet like that? Well, it's a digital front end with 800 watts of continuous power, more than 2,500 watts of peak power, but it's being outputted through um, an analog output stage using MOSFET transistors. And for that reason, we have tons and tons of current to drive these drivers. Also, because it is the 3000 series platform, it's incredibly low distortion, and we use that 50 megahertz analog devices DSP. And I was, I was really uh, with our team call uh, uh, a few weeks ago when we were uh, helping everyone to understand what was accomplished with this product. I really took my hat off to Ed and to Smith because they have become incredible at crafting a digital response curve so that the subwoofer is accurate, but also digs deep, plays as loud as you want. And, and most importantly, with this dual active opposing design that is a sealed box, it deploys room gain and what we call our acoustically tuned room gain and basically makes the subwoofer increase its output in terms of real world room response, but without any frequency response anomalies, meaning it's just as accurate as it would have been if you were listening to it in a cornfield, as it is in my office. And that's uh, totally remarkable. Hats off to Smith and Ed, but also that 50 megahertz analog devices DSP, which allows us to um, craft it almost what I my joke almost to the molecular level. They're crafting it down to really granular level, and at, at the result speaks will speak for itself. You'll see uh, if you uh, get involved with this product. Smith, have I said it correctly? Yeah, yeah totally, absolutely. I, I mean, it's it's a. Uh... The, the work that Ed and I do to, to, to really shape the response of the, of the products, it, it comes from years and years of experience and knowledge and just understanding how room gain can can work co collaboratively with a subwoofer. And that's and that's really one of the best parts about how all of these systems and this particular DSP allows us to really kind of optimize and, and utilize that that efficiency of the room. So, it's, so it's another a, special thing about the amp is the uh, the MOSFET output. And I think most people probably hear that and they're like, they're glazing over. So Ed, you're a good uh, explainer of things that are more technical that I don't understand. So why don't you say uh, quickly what the benefit of MOSFET transistors within uh, the micro is and why it's so important within a cabinet of this size? Well, Ed, and Ed, um, just to lead the witness a little bit, also the, the contrast between transistors and what normally is used in a digital amp, which is an integrated chip output instead of real transistors. Right, you know, a, a less expensive chip amplifier is going to have higher distortion, uh, less continuous power, and considerably less uh, peak power. So the the MOSFET metal oxide field effect transistor. Did I get it right? I'm pulling that one out of my <laughs> out of memory. The uh, the MOSFET amplifier has uh, a very high continuous power, incredible peak dynamic power, super low distortion. It just sounds and high current at high current capability. We were able to harness all of the power of the uh, of the three thousand series amplifier for this application, and and it it's very nuanced, very accurate, very low distortion. It really is a magic trick how good this subwoofer sounds, and and the uh, the amp is is a big part of that. But really, the dual opposed drivers. And the force cancellation, the distortion cancellation, that's one of the real magic tricks here, too. And and these these woofers are a complete ground up design. I, that's a good jumping off point, Ed, but I'm not going to let you steal my thunder because we're oh, going we're, we're, we're to talk about the drivers. Don't you worry about that. Uh, and I think that's what you're seeing here in this picture, the exploded view of our dual opposing eight inch drivers. And if you don't mind, Ed, I would actually like Smith to explain a little bit of the technology that's going on they're um you know they're connected in parallel mechanically and electrically so there's something right. going on there but i'd love just a general frame up of your approach to this driver design smith versus any other driver design you've ever done yeah well, so i mean we needed a, a new eight inch driver because it's a tiny cabinet so it has to be a, a smaller driver and we needed huge linear excursion so you can kind of actually see in this picture that we're using an inverted surround um, and that was one of the ways that we were able to get really uh, long linear excursion out, out, of, out of these drivers. 
And just to be uh, clear, that's in it. That's uh, instead of like a parabolic surround, which sort of bows yeah. out. Yeah, bows you, in, in usually, version. you see the surround and kind of bows out, like into the into the room. Um, and in this one, you can kind of see in the picture that actually goes inward. And so that's just an, another approach. But in this particular system, in this particular case, um, it was really advantageous to to have that so that we could get that linear stroke in this such a small package. Um, and then, especially because of how much current we're getting from this new from the amplifier we really had to investigate just every material choice that we made so it's aluminum former aluminum cone aluminum dust cap it's you know and all of that is so we have really great thermal uh transfer in in the driver um and then the i mean probably the most exciting part for me is the fact that there's there's two of them right this is not a ported system. This is not a system using a passive radiator where those contributions are, are fairly narrow. We've got two eight inch drivers, each of which are making a full acoustic contribution across the entire bandwidth. And then they're wired electrically in parallel. So they're seeing the exact seeing the same exact signal from the amplifier at the exact same time. So what ends up happening, they're both going out together, they're both going in together. And so what, the, that, the opposite of that would obviously be they're sort of moving against each other. And what, yeah, what are the you, drawbacks you of not, that? Yeah, you would not want that. And, that, and that's, one of the, that's one of the problems sometimes with um, passive radiators. And cause, that's what kind of causes them to walk because the driver's doing a lot and then the passive radiator's not doing as much and the whole thing just kind of... Well, the driver's ch the, the passive is chasing the driver. Yeah. So they're not... They're, as opposed to this uh, scenario where they're, they're, they're opposing each other Right. And therefore canceling cabinet resonances and also right. no no sense of the of the cabinet being yeah. that's that's why those those that other brand that I won't name uh, <laughs> is known for marching across the floor. Well and and the cancellation we're talking about is that when you have a woofer and it, and it's moving a lot, it's exerting you know acoustic energy into the room, but it's also exerting some mechanical energy into the enclosure. When we have two woofers like this and they're physically parallel, that's the mechanical parallel with each other, they're exerting the exact same energy except uh, uh, opposite of each other. And then basically it meets at the middle of the cabinet and that's where the cancellation, cancellation is. So it's mechanical cancellation inside the product. You get all of the acoustic output and none of the mechanical energy in the cabinet making the cabinet resonate and that's when the cabinet uh, resonates that creates distortion you can hear right totally absolutely and so, and just to point out because we have that uh um maybe you go to the full five uh, image of us nick because we uh we do have that 50 megahertz analog devices dsp guess what the svs mm -hmm. smartphone control app will totally control it mm -hmm. um and we can uh you can do anything you want with it all the different things that you might want to do uh, in terms of granular adjustments right from your phone, um, but I would also point out with this product because it's going to be in a uh, in a bedroom perhaps or an, an office. And by the way, not limited to that. Could be in a totally kick a home theater. We proved it in our industry demos uh, um, pre pre uh, COVID. We had some some pre production uh, prototypes that we showed the industry. Larry can testify these jaded industry people that I've known for many, many years who got that demo during CES or Cedia were, uh, those are trade shows, were totally floored by what they heard. Um, and it's, uh, it's because of that, that you have the ability to uh, put it in any room, but also you can put it in an uncompromised home theater. So I would say that in an office, you might use the presets to have a quiet mode so you don't disturb other people in the house. And Larry, you, you've just gotten one in here in the past week or so. And I know you've had some, uh, some issues with things on your wall and whatnot. What was your uh, first experience with these drivers and the SPLs that uh, they were putting out? So uh, I had not been able to hook it up yet because I've been training all our retailers on it. So I had it sitting here next to me. And yesterday I hooked it up after I finished my uh, last training of the day and it took the spot of an SB 1000. And so I put it down here and here on my desk, I have a pair of prime wireless and then I've got a seven channel system in here and another sound base. So there's 11 speakers in here, but I only had uh, these two going with the new micro and directly above me, I have a trinket shelf that's got an old vintage Star Wars lunchbox and some of my little micro <laughs> fitting uh, Star Wars Lego sets. And uh, I put on, I started with just some normal music then I went to the weekend blinding lights and I started cranking it up. 
and uh, I let out some ex expletives. I said, holy S, pretty loud. And uh, my 12-year-old and 10-year-old both came running in here to see what was going on. And then I put on my favorite um, uh, score, and uh, it's the soundtrack from Sunshine. And I put on the song uh, Daggio in, G in uh, D minor by John Murphy. And my God, the lunchbox fell, and it was amazing. And I started laughing. And um, I dented it, so I'm a little mad at myself because it is pretty vintage. But oh, I'm just absolutely loving this thing. And I've got a metal arcade sign over here that's in them with a nail, and it came out an inch. So it is pressurizing this room, and it's on a middle wall. So I see a lot of people asking about placement. Um, I don't think you're going to have an issue with placement. And Gary's talked about uh, in some of our meetings where uh, his set up in the room. So. I have uh, I have um, SB one thousand Pro under my desk, which is essentially in the middle of the room, and it totally because of the great work that Smith and Ed did, it just takes control of the room. The three thousand micro that I have here is uh, about a foot and a half away from the back wall, and essentially out in the middle of the room because it's up against a fireplace. So um, it's in the absolute worst place. You should you should never put a subwoofer there. Um, but it is just astonishing with its output. So very room I think that, placement that's actually a, friendly. A good, a good, great point that you brought up. And I, and I think it can tie back a little bit to the driver design, but Ed, maybe talk about how a dual driver subwoofer design is a little bit different than a single driver in terms of how it interacts with the room and what you're able to achieve with it. Because I, I do Be, think- Before a, we do that, you know, yeah. we have two more giveaways and the grand giveaway. So good maybe point. do one more. And All right. can we announce what the grand prize giveaway is now? I believe we can. Why don't we do the first giveaway? Then we'll announce the big one. Is that cool? So guys, we have a we have a big grand prize giveaway at the end of the show. So our uh, our giveaway right now, we're going to be giving away uh, this winner's choice of our new, brand new 1000 Pro Series subwoofers announced on our last audio file happy hour. And uh, again, you'll have your choice of finish or ported or sealed model. And our winner of the 1000 Pro Series subwoofer is... Stephen or Steve Colbert, Steve Colbert. That's with a K. Awesome. Steve Colbert. Congratulations. Congratulations. Not Colbert, Colbert. And that's and K O. Just, a, just we're we're picking from YouTube or Facebook without any um, prejudice to either. Yep, it's all completely random. Vince will reach out to you, Stephen, uh, and get your information. So. Um, our big giveaway for the evening, which we'll be doing right before we wrap up, uh, super excited to announce it's a, a phenomenal 2.1 system, as Larry mentioned. It is including our ultra bookshelf speakers, our prime wireless sound base, a 2.1 wireless integrated amplifier, 300 watts, 150 per channel, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth enabled, all sorts of bells and whistles, things awesome. And then, of course, your choice of black gloss or white gloss 3000 micro subwoofer and then we'll throw in the cables there so you can get it all connected to so a phenomenal ultra speaker 2.1 system with the prime wireless sound base and a brand new 3000 micro subwoofer so awesome. that is the and prime. that's what i'm listening to in my office that exact system and it's magic very cool so that is what we're going to uh to get to there. And uh, I mean, I think uh, we, we've talked a lot about our subwoofer control app and I know you brought it up, Gary, um, but, oh, sorry. I, I had my previous question for Ed about the dual drivers. Sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So uh, why don't you talk a little bit about the dual driver design in terms of how that interacts with the room and, and what it uh, accomplishes? I'm well, curious, you know, Ed, on that front, uh, as you answer that, and, and Smith too, the two drivers are outputting, you know, uh, essentially 10 feet apart, or excuse me, 10 inches apart. Does that do anything in terms of phase cancellation? Does that actually remove some room anomalies because there's two drivers? I'm, I'm very, I actually don't know the answer to this. No, they're, they're, they're functioning essentially as a point source acoustically, but you know, Nick asked about placement in the room and really it's kind of a, a multifaceted answer. The, the first one is this product is going to go into a lot of living room and family room uh, applications and and it's always a competition between uh, visual impact and decor integration and performance and finding a spot for the subwoofer so all these competing goals and 3000 micro will allow the user to put the subwoofer into more locations in the room with less visual impact find the perfect spot for it and because of the dual opposed woofers it has zero vibration mechanically so you can put it into maybe an entertainment center or uh, uh, some other type of cabinet 
and not all work. our subwoofers work in cabinets, but this one is definitely the best. It, it would it's perfect for that. You can you can hide this thing just it's it's amazing how small it actually is in person, and it opens up a whole new world of placement options within the room. Uh, and and that's really the beauty of it. I mean, you could even throw two of them in the room and have them virtually disappear and have amazing sound and great bass distribution. And we've actually tested putting it in furniture, which wouldn't be the ideal scenario, but what, uh, what's been your experience putting it like in a cabinet? <laughs> Zero vibration, nothing. That, that's what I'm doing with one of mine. And, and it's actually like a, a very large, like lit kind of open floor plan, living room, dining room. And it's, you know, it, it, it sounds like a much, much larger subwoofer than what, than what you would expect. It's really, it's really remarkable how it's Well, all that's done. the real magic trick is that Gary was referring to. This thing will fill, a, you know, a normal medium-sized living room, family room effortlessly. Mm -hmm. And you just wouldn't expect it to when you're looking at it. And Larry can attest during the demos, people were looking around and saying, where's the bigger subwoofer? This is not possible. Uh, and and it is, and, and that's the real magic trick. Yeah, and something else you'll be able to do with this that I see a lot of questions coming up about is, uh, it does have the USB port on the back to power our wireless transmission kit. So you right. can add our SoundPath subwoofer or a SoundPath wireless audio kit and make the transmission from your receiver or sound bar or two channel system, whatever, to the subwoofer wireless, put it in a cabinet, like Smith was saying, or put it in the back of your room and, and it gets its power right from the subwoofer. Experience. Doesn't need yeah. to plug into the wall. That's right. So we have talked a little bit about the cabinet, and I don't want to spend too much time on that because it's probably the the least sexy thing to talk about. But it is. Important. I think it's a pretty sexy cabinet, actually. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful externally, but I'm I'm talking about the internals. And I know you know heat management is always an issue, and then obviously bracing when you have two two drivers. So Smith, anything different or uh, innovative we had to do in terms of the internal design of the cabinet? Because obviously it looks gorgeous. I mean, like basically almost all of our products or actually all of our products for as a fact. Um, so we're using just extra thick baffles on, on the panels that are holding the drivers just because there's, there's so much force and, and energy imparted from those drivers. Um, and then I, I think, you know, you saw it when you were kind of showing it off a little bit. Yeah. The, the, the whole amplifier architecture is, it was a, a really long part of the development process to make sure that we were get, just getting the absolute best design and able to capture everything that's in the 3000 series amplifier. And so that's why that amplifier literally wraps all the way along the backside of the cabinet around and underneath the, almost the full, the full depth of the product. Um, so it's, it, the whole thing is just a, a really inert kind of new approach to, to a subwoofer for us. And, um, yeah. And that helps with the heat sink too, right, Smith? Yeah, the, I mean, we're, we're, we put a, a ton of time and energy into heat sinking the woofers. And then we're looking at what essentially is a very large heat sink with the wraparound amplifier yeah. chassis. Yeah, we had to try a lot of different approaches and that was definitely the best one. So I want to get into some questions about the subwoofer that don't really address or, or speak to the technology specifically, but I think they would be interesting for people to understand. And, and Gary, I'm going to kick this one to you first, because I've seen uh, quite a few questions about the types of speakers that this might blend the best with. And That's I know great. there's a, a good story there. So why don't you uh, share some insights on, on speakers and, and blending? So here's a couple of things. Um, first thing, uh, which doesn't answer your question, but I did want to make sure I get it out there is um is this a music subwoofer or a home theater subwoofer and the answer is it's either one it absolutely kicks as a home theater subwoofer it goes deep it plays loud it enhances the home theater experience um is it a music subwoofer totally i i think it is an absolutely wonderful music subwoofer i one of my tests is um one of my test demo tracks is um, Miles Davis, Someday My Prince Will Come. Try it yourselves sometimes, sometime SVS community. You can find it on Cobuzz, which is our go-to, or Spotify. And um, it has this double bass playing all these deep notes, and each different note uh, can be defined differently by a, a subwoofer that isn't competent. And it's just remarkable to me how each of those frequencies from those bass notes gets defined perfectly. And that's something I've been listening to for years and years to use as a, as a, a judge of, of the product's accuracy. It's super accurate, super quick, super musical. But does it go deep enough 
to match up with massive speakers. Well, I was talking to Smith about this actually. I'm not gonna name names here, but I have a pair of speakers uh, in, in our, you know, Smith and I are evaluating different reference, quote unquote, reference speakers. We might debate whether they really are reference, but we wanna make um, products that challenge that definition. So we've been playing around with this. Um, $24,000 tower speakers that I'm playing with. This subwoofer adds, it sounds like to me, almost an octave of deep bass to these very expensive large speakers. So I guess my answer to your question about, do you need to match this up with speakers is, it's really more about matching it up to the room. I think um, if you don't have room for uh, a normal sized subwoofer, um, then this product will work with any speakers and it will add deep bass to pretty much any speaker. So you don't have to worry as much about is this match to my speakers? More think along the lines of, if I don't have room, will this add to it? Absolutely. So Ed, anything special for people who might think about going stereo subwoofers or dual as we call it, that they should know about um, you know, using dual 3000 micro subwoofers? Well, it, actually I wanted to riff on something Gary said. We were actually trying to figure out how this fits into our speaker subwoofer matching tool. Right. And and we we really came to the conclusion that it just it it will work with any speaker. Uh and and it's not an exclusionary type thing. It will work with small satellite speakers or full range uh, uh towers as Gary was describing. So it it, it it's really an incredibly flex flexible and versatile uh, subwoofer. Now, what was your question, Nick? I was about going dual. And if there's anything special about, you know, placement or setting these up, you know, because of the dual drivers or just uh, their micro size enclosure in general. And they're, they're asking, everybody's asking how much is it? It's $799.99. Just bear in mind, there are micro subwoofers that are $2,000 and more. One just got launched that was around 1500 bucks. And, um, there's never been a micro subwoofer with output and low frequency extension like this. And people are asking, price. yeah, people are at asking about price. that too. We, we have rated it at 23 Hertz, but as far as the low frequency extension with room gain, uh, I mean, I don't know how low you guys have gotten it. Maybe you can chime in, but uh, that is the rated low frequency extension. Although you can push that if, uh, if you have it set up and insert, it's a ways. shocker. That's all I'm going to say. It's a shocker. It yeah, that, that's quasi anechoic. It's that's yeah. very conservative in room with room gain. It's going to dig considerably deeper. Uh, so extensions really not going to be an issue. Uh, Nick, to answer your question, if you're if you're uh, looking at duals, it this subwoofer is is uh, very easy to place in room. It's not picky, uh, and and the typical dual setups like opposite diagonal corners or midpoints on the sidewalls, anything like that will work fine. Uh, and and the uh, dual opposing drivers do load, load the room uh, nicely. And we've gotten just incredible results uh, with dual setups. So Nick, Smith, I'm Nick I think you have one more prize to give away before the grand prize. I, I know, I, I'm gonna get to that. Smith, I'm gonna pose a question to you, do the giveaway, and then you can be ready for your answer. This is probably a quick one, but I did see somebody ask, why aren't there ever ports on uh, on these really super compact subwoofers? So think about that <laughs> That's one. That's actually a really good question. I thought so too. I don't know the answer. So Smith, you can, you're not to mull on this one and Ed Mullen can uh, support you if, uh, if you don't know, but I'm sure you do. So our next Ed, prize you, giveaway is a Smith, pair can of- Can you Google it while he's giving the prize away? <laughs> Find out the answer. That's why I thought I'd buy you some time in case you need. We, are, we already know the answer to that we one. We know the answer. <laughs> we are giving away a pair of Prime bookshelf speakers uh, to our next winner, and uh, the winner of those Prime bookshelf speakers is Joe Gatz. Joe Gatz, congratulations! Congratulations, and, Joe. Prime bookshelf. Showing some new speakers here, and, and uh, in a little bit. I see a question asking if this will work with some of the prime wireless products in the sound base. Absolutely. 100%. It's perfect. It's, it's perfect for anything. those. That's literally what I have here at my desk. It's what we showed in this image here with the prime wireless speakers. So it will totally work with those. It's got the prime wireless has a subwoofer out. Uh, the micro 3000 has uh, an LFE input or a left and right stereo input as all of our subwoofers do. So it it's a, an amazing setup with the Prime Wireless speakers. That's what I've been saying. It's such a lifestyle looking product like Prime Wireless is. 
but it just doesn't sound that way. It, 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 it's got all of the big sound of our other subwoofers in this tiny package. And it, it's just shocking, actually, when, when you fire up the system and, and listen to how well it fills the room. Can I share with you guys my rhyme? Well, I don't think I Smith up? got a chance to answer your question. And I, I think uh, he, finished Google, he finished I'll Googling it. Now he knows. <laughs> I'll share my rhyme afterwards. You go for it, Smith. Why I, I, think, ported? I mean, you can, you can make a really small, really you know, highly tuned ported subwoofer, and it's just, it's just not going to play very deep. And it's probably not going to play very loud. You're just, you're, you're just kind of defeating the point of trying to port something at that low of frequency in such a small size. So it's, it's the answer uh, is it wouldn't more, it, it won't create what yeah. we, what we want to create the way we yeah. created it was massive amounts of power and two really competent drivers. Right. And then yep. careful and obviously careful engineering. Yeah. And I saw another cool, good question about the uh, grills, how they flare outwards a bit. Why did we design it that way, Smith? I mean, part of that shape is really to account for the excursion of the drivers. So it's, uh, you know, this, this is a different, category of products, we really needed a way to protect the drivers, they're on the sides. Um, and so this was kind of the the best or kind of organic shape that that really married well with the excursion of the drivers and protected everything and didn't make it stick out real far. So that was that was the best design. It's a, it's a very elegant look. And, and as I like to say about it, it is uh, handsome enough to put on display, but compact enough to stash away. So there's my line for you guys. There we go. Sorry, guys. That's what we've been waiting for, 56 minutes? <laughs> Tip your waiters. Tip your waiters. Nick, um, you, earned, you earned your marketing badge on that one. Very yeah, good. there yeah, you go. And I, I see a lot of people are, so yeah, many a lot of people are asking if this is wireless. Uh, every SVS subwoofer can be made wireless with our SoundPath wireless audio kit. But every product with the 3000 series amplifier and below, so 3000... 2000 Pro, 1000 Pro, and this new 3000 Micro has the USB port on it to power our wireless uh, reception kit. So you can make any of our subwoofers wireless with ease. So I, I'm going to tease the next happy hour before we do the giveaway because everyone, uh, I don't want everyone to, to leave in mass before we do. And uh, our next virtual audio file happy hour is going to be on April 1st. Wink, wink. And if uh, I might give a little spoiler, we might just have a new product launch. This is a SVS polishing cloth so uh, we might be launching that live on the next there's one. no so, new product uh, launch don't do that <laughs> a little teaser there for your next product launch here if you're, you're tuning in a new polishing but, but, cloth. but so. the cool thing is we're back to the every uh every other week uh which yep. we had to we had to move it around a little bit and we we weren't with you guys for three weeks because of this product launch we knew we wanted to do it today um but now we'll see you uh, uh two weeks from today which we're we need this this is the highlight of our week i don't i hope it is uh, for all of you all in in our community but this is definitely the highlight of our week that is absolutely true and the uh as i mentioned april 1st 6 p.m eastern time as we always do on our youtube and facebook pages if you're tuning in you know that uh but our grand prize just to recap real quick pair of ultra bookshelf speakers a brand new 3000 micro subwoofer, our prime wireless sound based wireless integrated amplifier, and some of our SoundPath ultra speaker cables and RCA component cables to get everything connected. And our winner of the grand prize is Tim Perry. Tim Perry, congratulations. Tim, congratulations. congratulations. That's, That's a kicking awesome. system, awesome. Tim. Coming your way. Awesome. And uh, I do encourage you, Tim, to reach out to uh, our, our uh, through Facebook or, or email to our team. And, uh, and Vince will be trying to track you down to get that out to you. I want to make sure you claim that ASAP. Uh, there will be reviews of this product popping off shortly. So look out for those, including on YouTube, Joe and Tell, uh, and some other places. So uh, check out for those. Uh, we're, we're super excited to launch this. All the details are on our site right now. Uh, so you can read about the specs in deeper detail. And uh, Gary, I am going to give you uh, closing words here to wrap up the evening. Anything you want to share about the 3000 micro or anything else before you let everyone go? Before you pass it to Gary, we have one more photo I think we really need to show everybody. Oh, that's right. We didn't show our comparison yeah. photo. This is the uh, so, 3000. Oh, you, you tune it up, Larry. You, you frame I it up. I think you're going to get a kick out of this. We wanted to show you the size comparison of the micro to our flagship PB16 Ultra. Look at this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that, it's pretty shocking. They, I'll tell you what, uh, this is a heck of a lot easier to move than that one. So, wow. Yeah. That that's one of the photo. Gary, okay, any closing um, thoughts? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I, I did. I, I, and we got, I've got 20 seconds to share my wisdom. So that's, that's about the right amount of time. Um, 
I guess, first of all, I hope, I, I said this the last time, I hope this didn't feel like uh, an SVS infomercial or a 3000 micro infomercial. It's really more about, and I really mean this from the heart, sharing our excitement with you guys because we feel so connected to you. Um, and we are excited. You can't, we, we've been living with this, especially uh, Smith, Ed and I have been going through iterations of this. We had a working version of this more than a year ago. Mm -hmm. And um, we just wanted it perfect. And, we, and, and I'm just totally thrilled with what we have here. I hope it wasn't too infomercially because it's really more about us sharing our passion and excitement. And finally, you know, doing these new product launches that, you know, COVID kind of delayed some of them. So it's, it's just very fun and very gratifying for us. And more importantly, really happy to be with all of you. The next show is April 1st. Maybe bring your suggested April 1st or pranks um, for the comments. Maybe we can give, give some uh, prizes away or a prize away to our favorite April Fool's comment. Hmm. There you go. Here's a little teaser. We'll have, uh, I'm sure Nick we'll have like, some product. Why does he yeah. always do this to me? He, I have no <laughs> idea what that even looks like. We'll, figure it out. <laughs> we'll frame it up somehow. But uh, again, thank you everyone for tuning in. We had so much fun tonight. We're going to be back April 1st. So uh, enjoy the 3000 micro. We are certainly will. And uh, we'll talk to you in a couple weeks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.